What's up everyone, Pitta Party? Today we're gonna be doing another story time because a lot of you have been asking me different questions like you know, how do I make money at this shit? How did I get into this? You know, what the hell am I actually doing? Type of thing. So long story short of it was back in I'm gonna say 2016 when the 20th anniversary of Pokemon came around. I already hear Iraqi calling me a simp somewhere in the background. Um, I was just in Toys R Us and noticed the Generations Mew pin boxes just on, I think it was 20 or 25% off, whatever the hell it was, on a display shelf as I was picking some stuff up for my niece. So I said, ah, screw it, I'll pick up you know one of these for me, one of these for her, we'll have a bit of fun. I hadn't opened up Pokemon packs in a while. So I just thought, you know, something fun for me to do with my niece. So brought them home. We opened a box each and had a bit of fun. I was like, oh yeah, that was great, whatever. And she's like, oh, look, Uncle Peter, are we going to get the rest of them? And then I found out that that was going to be a monthly box. And all of a sudden that two boxes I was buying for a nostalgic trip down memory lane turned into me buying two of each pin box every month to each of the premium boxes every time they came out and kind of snowballed from there. So after that we ended up moving on to the Shining Legends uh, nostalgia dump with all the different Shining cards and things like that and just through you know opening up packs regularly you go down watching stuff on youtube uh, people either opening cards or you know um just talking with their collections and stuff like that and then with the way the youtube algorithm is it ended up funneling me to old school experts page and his top 25 most valuable Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in i think it was 2017 he did his first one and as he's going down through him, I was like, okay, I like that card. I remember that card. He's like, oh, well, I have that card beat up. And, oh, shit. I ended up having like six of his top ten cards. You know, ungraded, mind you. But I was the type of kid who would take a card that was valuable. Or, you know, I thought was valuable. valuable uh, put it in a sleeve, put it in a top loader, and then, you know, hold on to it for dear life and never take it out again. So... I immediately started looking through my collection, um, found a bunch of the cards he had in the video, and started looking into it and finding out, oh shit, you know, this card I have is worth like a hundred bucks on graded. Or I could pay like 10, 20 bucks, get it graded, and then that hundred dollar card is worth a thousand dollars. That's stupid. So... I ended up catching a bit of the, we'll call it, dollar sign flashing in your eyes bug, where I bought a few collections, um, just buying and selling the cards, made a bit of money, bought some more collections, sold some more cards, sent some stuff off to get graded, and that included, you know, a bunch of my childhood cards. Uh, this was originally a 9, went to regrade it, tried to get a 10, and PSA finger nailed into it, but it is what it is. Uh, that's one of my original cards when I was a kid. I've had that Dark Magician Girl since, you know, the set came out. I bought it off of a guy at a shop outside the shop, long story, but anyways. Um, so what ended up happening was, you know, I was buying collections off of different people on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, and I would be getting them, making some money, rinse and repeating, and then I started getting into graded cards, did my first big, you know, like, eight card submission, next submission I'd be doing, you know, like, 30 cards, ooh, uh, that turned into, you know, these 50 cards, 60 card subs, Turn into 100, 150, 200, 250, and just kind of snowballed from there. 
So we'll get more into the whole, you know, economics and finance of how I end up making money and all that crap. But basically, it all stemmed for an actual love of the hobby. And, you know, just that inherent warm, fuzzy feeling you get when you open a card out of a pack or, you know, when you get a card back from PSA or Beckett and it's got that, you know, gem mint braid on it. That just gives you a nice feeling. And I think the first video I have on this channel actually was me opening up some base set booster packs and I ended up pulling a Charizard. And I remember when I was a kid and I ended up pulling a base set unlimited Charizard from a few booster packs that my mom bought me. And I remember screaming like a banshee because I was so excited that I pulled the Charizard. And, you know, if you watch the video, I still screamed probably louder, if I'm being honest, when I pulled that Charizard a year or so ago as when I pulled it as a kid. And, you know, that's really where all this comes down to is the nostalgic uh, trip down memory lane, if you want to call it that, of when you find something that you like, whether it's Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, sports cards, video games, you know, any of that stuff that you grew up with it as a kid, it just makes you feel inherently like a kid again. It makes you feel better about, you know, all the craziness going on in the world, uh, whether it's the coronavirus or, you know, financial collapse of all these different institutions and stocks going to hell and all that crap. You know, at least you have that inherent joy you feel when you look at, you know, your Charizard or your Blue Eyes or your Dark Magician Girl or whatever have you. And that helps you almost take, I don't want to call it a vacation from reality, but it helps isolate you from reality. And, you know, just think back to when you were a kid and you didn't have to worry about any of this shit. So that's honestly where this all started. Um... Like I said, I'll get more into the financial economics part of it in a minute, but um, that's pretty much it for today. I originally filmed this as one giant video, and I realized this was going to be way too freaking long, so I decided to cut it into a few different sections. So stay tuned for the next part. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Don't really care if you learned anything today, because it wasn't really about learning anything. Uh, but hope you have a good one.